Zeus came to the mountains. The wood nymphs rushed to embrace the jovial god. They played with him in icy waterfalls and laughed with him in lush green glades. Zeus's wife, Hera, was very jealous, and she often searched the mountainside, trying to catch her husband with the nymphs. But whenever Hera came close to finding Zeus, a charming nymph named Echo stepped across her path. Echo chatted with Hera in a lively fashion and did whatever she could to stall the goddess until Zeus and the other nymphs could escape. Eventually, Hera discovered that Echo had been tricking her and flew into a rage. Your tongue has made a fool of me, she shouted at Echo. Henceforth, your voice will be more brief, my dear. You will always have the last word, but never the first. And from that day on, poor Echo could only repeat the last words of what others said. One day, Echo spied a golden-haired youth hunting deer in the woods. The boy's name was Narcissus, and he was the most beautiful young man in the forest. All who looked upon Narcissus fell in love with him immediately but he would have nothing to do with anyone, for he was very conceited. When Echo first laid eyes upon Narcissus, her heart burned like the flame of a torch. She followed him through the woods, loving him more with each step. She got closer and closer, until finally Narcissus heard the leaves rustling. He whirled around and cried out, Who's here? From behind the tree, Echo repeated his last word. Yeah. Narcissus looked about in wonder. Who are you? Come to me. Narcissus searched the woods, but could not find the nymph. Stop hiding! Let us meet! Let us meet! Echo cried, then stepped from behind a tree. She rushed to embrace Narcissus, but the youth panicked when the nymph flung her arms around his neck. He pushed her away and shouted, Leave me alone! I'd rather die than let you go me! <laughs> was all that poor Echo could say as she watched Narcissus run from the woods. <laughs> Humiliated and filled with sorrow, Echo wandered the mountains until she found a lonely cave to live in. Meanwhile, Narcissus hunted in the woods, tending only to himself, until one day he discovered a hidden pool of water. The pool had a silvery smooth surface. No shepherds ever disturbed its waters. No goats, no cattle, no birds, or fallen leaves. Only the sun danced upon the still pond. Tired from hunting and eager to quench his thirst, Narcissus lay on his stomach and leaned over the water, but when he looked in the glossy surface, he saw someone staring back at him. Narcissus was spellbound, gazing up at him from the pool, with eyes like twin stars, framed by hair as golden as Apollo's, and cheeks as smooth as ivory. But when he leaned down and tried to kiss the perfect lips, he kissed only spring water. When he reached out and tried to embrace this vision of beauty, he found no one there. What love could be more cruel than this? When my lips kissed the beloved, they touch only water. When I reach for my beloved, I hold only water. Narcissus began to weep. When he wiped away his tears, the person in the water also wiped away tears. Oh no! shouted Narcissus. I see the truth now. It is myself I weep for. I yearn for my own reaction. As Narcissus cried harder, the tears broke the glossy surface and caused this reflection to disappear. Come back! Where did you go? The youth cried. 
I love you so much. At least stay and let me look upon you. Day after day, Narcissus stared into the water in love with his own reflection. He began to waste away from grief. Until one morning, he felt himself dying. Goodbye, my love. Goodbye, my love. Echo cried to Narcissus from deep within the woods. Then Narcissus took his last breath. After he died, the wood nymphs and the water nymphs searched for his body. But all they found was a magnificently beautiful flower beside the hidden pool where the youth had once yearned for his own reflection. The flower had white petals and yellow centre, and from that day on it was called a Narcissus. And alas, poor Echo, desolate after Narcissus's death, did not eat or sleep as she lay for only in her cave. All her beauty faded away, and she became very thin, until only her voice was left. Thereafter, the lonely voice of Echo was heard in caves, repeating the last words anyone said. <laughs>